to no experience with 3D virtual worlds to why they might want to use said worlds. If I post a very technical article and it's the only article I post, chances are it will either go over my audience's head way over or only be absorbed by a niche population that understands the geek terminology. That's if I understand the geek terminology I'm using, which is not always the case. If I post an article that talks about Second Life and my audience has a very preconceived idea of the platform, implicit bias, or no idea at all, Will the audience magically know that SLT stands for Second Lifetime and that Second Lifetime is equivalent to Pacific Daylight or Pacific Standard Time? I agree with you, Ree. They won't. Will they understand that they need an account with Second Life to get to the geospatial coordinate listed in the post? Nice prefacing, Re. Eclectic, thank you for that response. Will they need to utilize a portal viewer unless they are aware of and can use Speedlight for a mobile unit? Most of the users here are using the Second Life portal or the Firestorm portal. And I know of one proficient user who utilizes Catsnip. There are other portals. But will they know? And do they even know that they can use a mobile unit? Do they know that they would benefit first or from the first entering Second Life through an acknowledged gateway or with a mentor to assist in some of the first step learnings so they can attend a meeting? All of this comes from your basic post. Exactly, what does VWBPE stand for or CBP? Here is the URL for the Speedlight, which is speedlight.io, to explore later if it draws your interest. And here are two links to take steps exploring implicit bias. Squirrel alert! Now back to my point. Yes, I do break for squirrels. If I make a post that could be augmented with other posts to create a more cohesive story, I give my audience steps they can use to build their own scaffold, their own ladder of learning. And I see your comments and I'm going to get back to those so that I can keep this going. I love it, the acronyms, the shiny. <laughs> yes, and Lumia is no longer. All right. I also give them the moment and space they might want to comment, reply, or ask a question, just like Eclectic Stranger and Re just did in between two of my posts right now. No matter what social media you're using, you can do the same thing. It is this interaction that is best practice in posting, generating audience interactivity rather than analysis numbers that propels the story goal I want them to be aware of. Yes, building our own scaffold. I can't even say that word, Val. I'm just going to let you know that I saw the V word. <laughs> Here are two graphics that illustrate using my social media dashboard to storehouse and schedule the postings towards my concept. Yes, Bev, I understand that Lumia does still work if you had it on your phone or tablet previous to them ending it. First is my series of four tweets being scheduled in hashtag Shay recommends on parts of the metaverse centered around Tom Bolstroff at 
T. Bolst, I have no idea how to pronounce his Twitter handle, his thank you to S.L. Hamlet for excerpting, excerpting, I can't say that word, we're going to skip it, the preface to the new edition of Coming of Age in Second Life, and his interview with at Design Notes Pod, transcription and video. I see that laugh there, Zri. Here are the links. Now, you will not be able to read what's on the graphic, but you can find the posts on my Twitter profile dated September 24th, 2022. Here's the profile posts so that you don't have to look them up. There's one, there's two, there's three, and there's four. And that was a series of posts. An important practice is to include a CC or a hat tip or a thank you or another mention of another entity who is profiled in the content. This invites participation with a possible like or reshare or comment or question and broadens the audience range. It is not best practice to do this blatantly and aggressively. At the moment, I don't know how to word that. There are tacky and invasive ways of doing it, and there are inviting and welcoming ways of doing it. Lesson two. Numbers are not the game. Interacting and being understood is. I'm circling back to planning. There's that word again. Plan your share to be reshared. No matter our favorite flavor of social media. We've come across that post that speaks to something we want to know. And we cannot get to the link because it's been truncated. Cut off in mid-sentence, so to speak. This happens because folks allow the link or URL to populate in the post at the very end. This notoriously happens in Twitter being limited to a specific number of characters. I think it's 280 currently and started at its inception at 140 characters per tweet. Meta in 2019 cut off Facebook posts on Androids and iPhones at 150 characters displayed. I'm not aware of what their current limits may or may not be. If you want to locate character limits, which is still a very broad search, type in the name of the social media platform and the phrase character limit into your favorite search engine. If nothing else, it will keep you occupied for a few minutes if you've gotten bored. For example, Twitter character limit. The issue is if our link is chopped off, there's no link to follow. So anyone sharing or reposting our dazzling piece of content may get our handle in there and the beginning text without giving their audience the full link. So we get numbers and no interaction because of the meat of the post is blitzed. Awesome Dex. Dex is sharing with us that YouTube has 255 characters. To those of us who, are, who only log into social media using its native accessibility, for example, we manually log into the platform or use its native app. Truncation may not make much of a difference at all, yet not everyone does that. And some of the resharers with the largest audience utilize a social media dashboard of some sort. 
I invite you to consider that a growing number of people do not log into the native application. It's time consuming. It is a huge time sink and usually limited in search response compared to social media dashboards. Squirrel alert, I'll be delving a tiny bit into social media dashboards before I end this session. An inquisitive has stated that the character limit on all social media sites must be six. I'm not certain I understand that. We can chat about that later, Loon, because I'm not sure what you mean. If we use more than one flavor of social media, it becomes even more time consuming. Have we ever tried to post to LinkedIn, Meta, Instagram, Flickr, our blog, and whatever else, and deliver a variation of the same post? Oh, phew! It makes me fatigued even thinking about it. And Re has posted in the URLs for Hootsuite and Buffer, which are social media dashboards. More importantly, our goal is to get the content of what we are posting to our audience and to the audience of those who are resharing our posts. And if the valuable link is placed last in the post, which most native apps for your fla favorite flavor do, then it's the first thing lost when someone reshares, reposts your lovingly crafted piece. And Dex has shared more information about YouTube. For example, here's the URL to a graphic I'll use as an exemplar. Now, I pick this tweet up from my social media dashboard to retreat, retreat? Ooh, am I trying to run away? Let me try that again, to retweet. The critical URL link to the content is at the end of the tweet, and my retweet as it stands is going to be 15 characters over the allowed limit before truncation. Thank you, Nam. I am accepting your compliment. Thank you. And <laughs> the URL is 22 characters. 22 versus 15. I don't do math, but even I'm sensing a miscombo here. So if I blithely retweet, <laughs> that was the noise of your computer going nuts. The link is cut off. No clicking love. This means the person retweeting has to edit the repost. A huge portion of folks will not take the time to do that. Yes, eclectic. It is not enough to simply have someone repost our name and beginning sentences for analytics sake. Without that URL link, the end user, our audience is not getting the contact we want them to have to base their decisions on or to enjoy if it's a lighthearted share. If I have to edit the post someone else has made and cut 15, more or less, characters out, it can change the gist, the desired meaning of the post. For instance, my go-to choice in cutting characters in a Twitter post is to cut the hashtags. This graphic link I just dropped into chat shows how I revised the post. The hashtags may have the most significance to the original poster. That may not. If we are the original poster, what would we want someone who is resharing our post to cut out if they have to? Or what would we not mind being trunc truncated automatically? 
best practices in constructing a post for any social media platform is to put the link after the first descriptive sentence. If it's a short sentence, <coughs> excuse me, or in the middle of a sentence, if it's a long sentence. I see your question, Marley. Re and I will get to it at the end of the session. Lesson three. Much like blocking someone in Second Life, we can block someone on our social media accounts. And if we can't, I seriously recommend dumping that particular social media venue. If we block someone on Twitter, generally the following will happen. I see your comment, General, and I'll get to it later person will automatically stop following us and our account will no longer appear in their Twitter contacts. In addition, we will also stop following them. If this person is in one of our lists, they will automatically be dropped from that list and the user will not be able to retweet any of our shares or posts. If the user happens to see that they no longer follow us and try to follow us again, when they arrive on our profile, they will see that we have blocked them. The exception we can make when we have a private profile on Twitter is to show what we are publishing only to whom we give permission. Now that's all well and good. However, on Twitter, as in Second Life, this person, this troll, this griefer, can continue to read our shares and or collect data on us. Now, I won't go into the logistics on how that can be done in Second Life. We don't have time for that today. With Twitter, when a user is logged into Twitter and tries to see our Twitter account, if they are blocked, they won't see it. Yet, if they simply sign out, and enter our Twitter username or handle on a search engine, they can access our entire timeline with no blockage. I believe this is similar for most of the other venues as well. I may be wrong, but we can check it. For instance, here are two portal, excuse me, pictorial graphic examples of a griefer or a troll on Twitter who was trying to terrify folks or terrorize, whichever word you like, terrify or terrorize, associated with VWEC and VWM 22 in mid-September. Now this particular griefer was using tactics that would not show up on a standard Twitter account but you can see that he was highlighting many, many, many users, which he normally wouldn't have enough space for. I'm going to share with you, and normally I do not share Twitter names of bad people, but if you are a user of Twitter, a member of VWEC, a member of VWM OOC, or associate with folks like that, I recommend taking a preemptive action and blocking log into your Twitter account. And a half. I've referenced social media dashboards twice or thrice during a time today. You got it, Nam. Here it is. They are used by people for a variety of reasons. The reason I bring them up specifically in this half lesson is to draw our awareness to the fact that not everyone logs into their social media account in that social media's native format. If you're counting, I've alluded to that three times or more now. It's important. Thank you, Ree. I assumed that, but I didn't know. I picked up the example of this specific grief or troll in the social media dashboard I utilize for scheduling my shares, my posts. These types of dashboards range from free to fee for various capabilities. 
I use Sendable because I have a grandmothered rate with them from having been with them a long, 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 long time. I've used others before that on a free and fee basis. Hootsuite, Sprout Social, and I used a variety of others whose names escape me in having been the poster for various organizations and projects in my way back past. Here are two links, neither of which I've vetted past a quick glance, to give you something to start a path of exploration of social media dashboards, if you wish, along with what Re has already provided in chat. Now these two links will list a number of dashboards. Finally, we are nearing the end of my presentation. You can stop and scream and trample now. Okay. We did not set out to become experts on educating by strategizing our social media. We strove to take in some concepts that may not have been in our conscious awareness. I see your question, Marley. Each one of the practices I've covered can be expanded upon and there are many of us in this space who are expert enough to do so. I invite folks to connect with NPC with a request to present a full hour topic or series on the subject. And Re also wants to remind folks that many of these dashboards have nonprofit discounts. So check on any tools that you use and see if they do, if you are a nonprofit. Also, some schools. So if you are on an educational email, that might help as well. And Megs is responding to Marley. We'll get back to those at the end. Before we head into questions and comments, if there are any, I'd like you to reach for your glass of water and take a sip. This does a number of things, including prompting you to slightly alter your posture, posture, to inhale and exhale, move your eyes from the screen and back, and a blink once or twice. These are all small steps of self-care taking. Think of Nam, and perhaps practice one of her many tiny moment mindfulness practices. Re, the mic is back to you. Do we have questions and comments that we need to pay attention to? Thank you, Eclectic. Thank you, Nam. Go, Bev, desk yoga. Thank you, Buffy. Thank you, Jenna. Shiloh, you are awesome. Thank you. Re is going to guide us because I am having issues with my computer and trying to handle everything at once. So I'm counting on Re's wonderful abilities to get us back to where we need to be. I will stay on mic. Oh, nice, might be. Where was that? Which, um, are you talking SL or are you talking one of the major uh, platforms? Thank you, Ellie. If anyone does not have the complete transcript, let us know, either Re or I can send it to you. Ah, go popcorn. Thank you, Briella. SL, gotcha, might be. And I'm waiting for Re to repost Marley's questions and comments and gentles. Okay, in response to why aren't well-known griefers totally blocked by the Lindens, I personally cannot answer that question. I do not know. I defer 
to the many experts we have in the audience, and some folks have been answering it already. The second question I will take while others are deciding how they want to answer the first one, is there an optimum amount of social media so the info does not become redundant? This is a matter of choice. And it becomes a choice of whether to get highly aggressive or whether to stay subtle or whether to be in the mid-range. Marley, it also depends on which social media venue you are using. Some social media venues expect immediacy, as in 20 or 30 times a day. That's too much for me, and I wouldn't put up with it on any medium. I prefer to post two to four scheduled times a day so that varying parts of the world can get my social media. And my personal preference is not to keep repeating the same post time after time, week after week for the same event. If you watch my um, Twitter, or if you're a Twitter user, you'll see that I change up for every post. And some of the people that I follow and retreat change up. They're posting about the same thing, but they're using a different variation. And they may post a day in advance or a week in advance, and then they may post three hours in front of the event. And if it's super important, they may post a live stream or a you can attend now at the time. I go to lesser posting with more grokking of content than I do numbers, Marley. Does that answer your question? And by all means, if anyone else has an answer, please chime in. I, I meant more um, uh, how many different social media uh, anyone uses to put the same post on over and uh, over. Yes. Okay. First of all, no matter how many of the social media that you to, do choose to use, please do not use the same exact post for each one. If a person is following you on five different social media, they will see the same post time after time, and they will think that you are mass distributing. You want to change up the wording, change up the picture, or change up whatever. And the actual number of social media to post on is going to depend on you, and I'm pretty sure most folks are going to hate me for saying that, but I'm going to say it again. It depends on what you can put up with. Right now, because of my well-being concerns, I am only posting on Twitter. When I was in my heyday and posting for other projects, I was posting on however many medium the client was using. And that could have been Instagram, Facebook at that time, Meta Now. It could have been Twitter. It could be Discord Now. It could be Blog as long as you can keep it up. The necessary thing to remember is how many media can you work on and interact if someone responds to you. If you can't get to all the media that you want, maybe it's time to consider hiring a volunteer assistant or a paid assistant. And I think I missed another question. Go ahead, whoever was talking. Absolutely.
Nam, my eyes are giving me trouble. Give me a second. Is it the what are your social media handle? I'd love to follow you. Okay, right now, well, I still have social media handles from my previous physical life in other areas, but the one that I am using and growing right now is Shea Change Heart at um, Twitter. Give me a second and I will plop it in again for you. Sorry for the typing, I can't do everything at once and <laughs> keep it from going through the mic. There you go, Nam, or whoever needed it. And I'll ask, are there any further questions or comments from anyone in the audience? Because all of you have so much valuable experience with social media and we can share it with each other. I'm turning off my mic now and leaving it to read.